opted out last year. He's one of those guys. Uh, just, just tell us uh, what you liked about him. He was very productive, you know, two years ago. But uh, how you think he'll he'll fit into your defense? Well, I think he's going to be a nice piece to have. Any player we pick this year, as we've said, is going to be, I guess you could call a luxury. Um, but in his particular case, we can't, you know, it's nice to have stockpile on, on edge rushers. We had two pretty good ones there at outside linebacker. But, and we, we like Anthony and Cam Gill, um, shows a lot of promise, but you can't have too many of those guys. So he's big, he's athletic, plays very hard. Um, fact that he didn't play this year um you know we opted out tried to get back in but it was too late but um he uh we felt like he's a player that if he had played this year and had similar production or better that uh his his value really would have gone up next year so uh we feel like we got great value there and uh we're going to say that about any pick we have but if we actually <laughs> we're actually very excited about him was it difficult waiting Jason I mean it's a position you'd love to be in every year but watching guys come off the board? Um, well, I don't want to say difficult. We knew it was going to happen. So um, we knew we had a pretty good sense of who was going to come off and who was going to be there. He was he was uh, one of the, he was the top guy that we had um, when we picked. Um, he was over guys that had been picked. Um, we were very – he was going to be one of our um, situations where if we walked away and we got Joe Tryon, we are going to be elated. So we are. All right, we'll go over to Jenna Lane. Hey, Jason, um, you had kind of um, you kind of mentioned this um, just a moment ago. You you had a number of, of really quality guys that were still on the board, uh, including uh, Aziz um, out of Georgia, and then also defensive tackle. Um, you talked about that not being necessarily a, a deep class. Uh, Christian Barmore was still on the board. What what separated Joe Tryon from some of the guys that that uh, are still on the board right now? Well, we we took him. We obviously thought he was a better fit for us. Um, you know, finding a the big six foot five, two hundred sixty pound edge rusher. You know, that runs four six three. Not that we put everything into times and measurements, but um, that had solid production two years ago, then we feel like he's even better, has a chance to be even better than he was. Um, it's too hard to pass on. So, um, you know, everybody's got their opinions on players based on mocks, but we just base ours off the tape and our evaluations. And, and, you know, he doesn't have the pressure of having to start right away because he's got JPP and Shaq Barrett, two phenomenal guys to learn from. Um, you know, how do you see him kind of developing with those guys and kind of growing behind them? Those guys, including our entire locker room, but those guys in particular, since we're talking about that position, are, are awesome. And they're going to do whatever they can to make this team better. And if that means taking him under their wing – to show them the ropes, I'm sure they will. Um, they're in no danger of losing their starting job, I can tell you that. Um, but, you know, like I said, the, there's injuries, there's a lot of things that happen throughout the course of a season, so it's nice to have to stockpile, especially at that position, getting after the quarterback. Thank you. We'll go over to Greg Allman. Hey, Jason, I just want to ask you about his personality. What do you like about him? Uh, Chris Peterson had said that, that he really has a, a mental makeup that you look for in a pass rusher, just asking, just curious what your interaction with him was just as a, as a person, as much as a player. Really enjoyed getting to know him over Zooms um, throughout the last few weeks, months, whatever it's been. Um, we had great reports coming out um, before we met with him um, on his personality and, you know, the fact that he's a great teammate. He's um, he's wants to give a hundred percent effort at all times. He's um, dedicating himself to football and to be the best that he can. And it really comes out in the interviews with him. Um, I think you guys are really going to like him. He's a very intelligent guy. I'm very passionate about the sport. Thanks, Jason. We'll go to Joey Knight. Jason, what can you tell us about Joe's speed? Not just his 40 time, like his lateral speed, just his speed in general. He's... First of all, he's 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 very fluid athlete. He's very he's got very good feet. He's got good lateral quickness. Um, he he plays with tremendous effort, which raises his game speed, in my opinion, um, because he never gives up. And um, 
you know, we just thought that his, his, his workouts were really jumped off the tape, just the way he can move his feet and move laterally and play with balance um, in his drops, um, things like that. He's going to be a very versatile guy for us. Um, he's, he's got the, he's got the luxury of, of not having to be out there right away and be a starter right away or, or be a major contributor right away. We will take our time with him. And when, when he's ready, we'll, he'll be out there playing a role. All right, we'll go over to John Romano. Hey, Jason, I'm just curious if you were tempted at all to move up or back in the draft, either for Joe or for anybody else. Were there any intriguing offers out there? Uh, it was it was fairly quiet on the trade front uh, for us. It joked around all day that my phone didn't ring at all for a couple days, which normally positions that we've been in, in the past, you'd have a lot, a little bit more movement or people trying to move. Um, had some opportunities to trade back, but we didn't want to, um, if Joe was sitting on the board. So, um, came down to that pick right in front of us. If, if, if he had been taken, we would have maybe entertained some of those offers, but, uh, we didn't have to. So, um, once again, I, we had a list of players that we came up with. If these guys are sitting on the board, one of these guys, even if it's the last guy, um, left, we weren't going to move. And we were, uh, we turned down, um, opportunities to move back because we wanted Joe. We have time for a few more. We're going to go to Greg Allman. Jason, for you, obviously you guys have gone to Washington and had good luck with Vita Vea before. I don't know if there's any commonality between them. I think they were teammates but didn't actually play together. Uh, but same position, same school, twice in four years. Yeah, we, we've we had some luck with Washington. So um, <laughs> that. It's not doesn't have anything to do with the pick. Uh, he could have been playing at uh, University of Tennessee Chattanooga for all I care. We we still would have picked him. Um, he's a so they did they did cross over. We talked about that in the zooms with Joe, um, and uh, you know he obviously spoke very highly of Vita. So, um, but you know it, to play in that program, that's a very good program that they have there historically, and players uh, usually. Um, come out of there you know they 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 understand the grind they understand the process and they, most of them um really uh turn out to be pretty good players thanks jason we'll go to josh allen from bucks report hey jason how are you doing good how are you i'm doing well i just want to ask you now that you guys have made your first round selection there's a lot of good names still and good prospects still left on the board how does that reset your your board going into day two and day three does it maybe make you pause and think hey maybe we can maneuver around trade up and maybe potentially grab one of these guys who are you know quote unquote to be falling given that this team has very little roster spots uh that, I, that you know it will be tough for all eight eight draft picks currently to make the team um yeah we always do that though with every draft we'll gather up tomorrow we'll have you know entire day to talk it through, um, making a, a huge jump from the bottom of the round all the way to the top. Um, usually it was take a little bit too much um, to, uh, to do that. Um, I don't want to wipe away our entire draft. We still have several players kind of pegged in each round that we think can make our football team and help us out. So, um, you know, I'm not ruling out trying to move up a little bit, um, but, um, you know, it'd have to be the right, they have to be the right price. It'd have to be the right player. Our last one is going to come from Leo Haggerty. Jason, with Tyron opting out this year, did you have to go back and talk to Coach Peterson a little bit more, being that there was no film on him this year? Uh, we talked to a lot of people there. Um, so we felt very comfortable with what we had, um, the information that we had. It, it wasn't really a um, – it was you couldn't find anything negative uh, about Joe as a as a person, and he's another quality person to add to this locker room um, that's going to add and not take away. So we're uh, we were we were very comfortable with all the legwork that our scouts did, and and our coaches. Um, he's they they do a phenomenal job, and my hats off to them this year, especially with the with the restrictions that we had. They they went the extra mile. So. Very feel very confident about our group of scouts and what they do. All right, that's all for this evening. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, guys.